Hello, and welcome to the Lee and Lowe Books Showcase webinar. I'm Cheryl Klein, the Editorial Director of Lee and Lowe Books. I'm here with Stacy Whitman, the publisher of our novel imprint, Two Books. And we're excited to introduce you to our full slate of 2018 titles. I'll take you through our picture books, early readers, and chapter books. And then Stacy will take over for our middle grade and YA novels. To keep track of the books you'll see here, or for more information about them, you can visit this link and download our 2018 catalog. We'll also send the catalog in an email later. Um, nearly all of our titles are also available on Edelweiss, so if you're a reviewer or a librarian, please check them out there. And if you'd like to tweet about anything you see in this presentation, you are very welcome to do so. Uh, please tag us at Lee and Lowe, or use the hashtag LLBooks18. This webinar is being recorded, and a link to the recording will be sent to you in a couple of days. It will also be available on leeandlow.com. And if you have any questions, feel free to, chat, to type them in the chat box where our marketing director, Hannah Ehrlich, is hanging out. And they'll be answered either in the chat or afterward. I'm speaking today on behalf of my fellow Lee and Lowe editors, Louise May, editor-at-large, Jessica Echeverria, our senior editor, and Candace Costin, assistant editor. And they edited all of the beautiful picture books you'll see in this presentation. It's a real pleasure to get to work with them. To tell you a little more about Lee and Lowe Books, our company was established in 1991, so we're now celebrating our 27th year in publishing. Then as now, we're family owned and fully independent, and one of the few minority owned publishing houses in the United States. And we're still dedicated to our founding mission, to publish diverse stories all children and young adults can enjoy. We're always excited to work with debut authors and artists of color, and we're proud to have published the first books by many outstanding talents, including Caldecott winner Javaka Steptoe, Paula Yu, and Don Tate. And if you are an unpublished author of color or an indigenous author for children or young adults, or if you know such an author, please consider our annual writing contests. We offer the New Voices Award for a picture book manuscript and the New Visions Award for a middle grade or YA novel. And the winners of each contest receive a cash prize and the publication of their books. You can find out more at leeandlow.com slash writing contests. And the submissions window is open now and due by the end of the summer. If you'd like to, whoop, whoa, whoops, sorry. If you'd like to order the books you, ah, there we are. If you'd like to order the books you'll see today, you can go through our website, leeandlow.com, wholesalers like Ingram, Baker and Taylor, and Follett, your local bookseller, or your favorite online retailer. And if you're a teacher or administrator, please get in touch with us directly. Our sales team, led by Abe Barreto here, works closely with schools and districts to create customized orders that fit your students' needs. And you can reach out to Abe for more information. Finally, our website, leeandlow.com, is full of amazing resources like teacher's guides, author interviews, reading lists, our submissions information, and the open book blog, where you can keep up with what we're publishing and talking about. Please check it out. So without further ado, welcome to our 2018 picture book list. And we're actually starting out this time with the best possible introduction to Lee and Lowe. Baseball Saved Us by Ken Mochizuki illustrated by Dom Lee, coming this October. And this is a great introduction to Lee and Lowe because 25 years ago, Baseball Saved Us changed the children's literature landscape and put us on that landscape by telling the story of the Japanese American concentration camps during World War II from the Japanese American perspective. Now this anniversary edition will introduce new readers to this modern day classic. One day, my dad looked out at the endless desert and decided then and there to build a baseball field. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, Shorty and his family have been forced to relocate from their homes to a camp in the desert, where they face freezing cold nights and long, boring days. So they build a playing field that changes their lives. Because Shorty and his friends aren't just playing for fun. They're fighting for self-respect and dignity as Americans playing the all-American game. Baseball Saved Us has sold more than 700,000 copies in its lifetime, and it remains the touchstone for teachers introducing students to the Japanese-American internment. 
This 25th anniversary edition features revised and refreshed covers for all editions and a new introduction from the author and illustrator. And it will still be available in both English and Spanish paperback. If you've never seen this groundbreaking book, there's no better time or edition to check it out. Next up, Binji, The Bad Day and Me by Sally J. Pla, illustrated by Ken Min, coming this September. This book is Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day through an intersectional lens. As Sammy, his little brother Benji, who is on the autistic spectrum, and their mom all figure out how to handle a bad day. Nothing went right for Sammy today. And when he gets home from school in the pouring rain, he finds his little brother Benji is having a bad day too. Benji has a special play box where he goes to feel safe with his cozy blue blanket. And today he's staying there while mama is busy. Sammy is convinced no one cares how he feels or even notices him. But somebody is noticing. And he wraps Sammy up nice and tight, just the way Benji himself likes to be comforted on his bad days. This sweet story captures the challenges and joys of being a sibling and also bucks stereotypes to show an autistic child's capacity for empathy. Own Voices author Sally J. Pla, who won the Dolly Gray Award for the Sunday Birds, based this story on the experiences of her three sons, one of whom is autistic, and is illustrated by Ken Min, who won the Apollo Award for Hot Hot Roti for Dada G. Binji, The Bad Day in Me will be one of the few picture books to portray a child of color with autism and we're delighted to have another book celebrating neurodiversity on our list. Next, Book Joy, Word Joy by Pat Mora, illustrated by Raul Colon, coming this July. You may know Pat Mora as an acclaimed poet and the author of many lovely picture books, and Raul Colon from his many beautiful picture books, many of them with Pat Mora. Now they're teaming up again for a delightful book of poetry celebrating the pleasures of reading, writing, and the imagination, all part of what Pat calls book joy, word joy. And we are lucky to have a brief video from her here introducing the book. Hi, this is Pat Mora. You and I know book joy, which is why over 20 years ago, I founded Children's Day Book Day, Dia de los Niños, and Dia de los Libros. I feel lucky to be a reader and a writer to savor words, word joy. Wonderful Lee and Mo Books is publishing my new book, Book Joy, Word Joy, illustrated by the wonderful Raul Colon. Such talent, such energy on the pages. I hope that as you turn the pages of the book, you will savor word joy and that you will find poems you'd like to share. I want to share one of the poems with you now. Collecting words. All day, I collect words. Words that move like wiggle. Glowing words like candle. Drifting words like butterfly. Singing words like ding dong. I collect words that make me smile like tiny that fill my mouth like bubble and bumblebee, that float along river, that have a brown scent, cinnamon, that sweetly stretch, caramel. I collect short words, hard words like brick, soft words like lullaby, cozy words, snug, funny words, rambunctious, Scary words, snake. Jumpy words, pick up. Big words, onomatopoeia, point, point. I whisper, say, shout, write, and sing my words. What words will you collect today? So, we're grateful for Pat for taking the time for making this video, and we hope that you'll check out Book Joy, Word Joy next month. Oop. Next up, we have Confucius, Great Teacher of China, which was published last February. 
Now, you may know Demi as the author of more than 300 gorgeous picture books featuring history, storytelling, and myth. Now all of those come together in Confucius, where she reveals the story of a man who literally changed the minds of his whole nation. Confucius was born in 551 BCE in a China riven by civil war. As he grew up, he looked at the chaos around him, and he realized that if his country was going to become stable, it needed rulers who were wise and thoughtful people. So he became a teacher, emphasizing the values of tradition and compassion. 500 years before Jesus set forth his golden rule, Confucius declared his own golden mean, never impose on others what you would not choose for yourself. His ideas were passed down in a collection of sayings called the Analects, and they were eventually adopted by the Han Dynasty, setting up a golden age in Chinese history. As China plays an ever larger role on the world stage, it becomes even more important for American children to learn about the country's history and heroes, and there's no better person to start with than Confucius. This book was a Junior Library Guild selection, and Kirkus called it an appealing biography done in classic Demi tradition. Next, we have Every Month is a New Year by Marilyn Singer with collage illustrations by Susan L. Roth, published this last month. Now, you might know Marilyn Singer from her dozens of acclaimed books, including the beautiful A Full Moon is Rising, and Susan L. Roth from her Cybert Medal winning Parrots Over Puerto Rico. Now, these two unique talents unite for Every Month is a New Year, which highlights New Year's celebrations around the globe and around the calendar. In many places around the world, the new year starts at midnight on December 31st, but not everywhere. Chinese New Year is celebrated with a dragon dance in January or February. Iranians observe Nowruz with a special feast in March. The Maori fly traditional kites when they celebrate Matariki in June, while Ethiopians greet the new year with bunches of yellow daisies at Nkututash in September. As you can see, Every month and holiday gets its own special poem and illustration presented in calendar format. This is for Diwali in India. And, and this makes the book suitable for reading every single month of the year. Marilyn's poems are also written in a variety of forms, which make great examples in poetry units or writing classes. And in its back matter, the book includes an introduction to New Year celebrations, a map, facts about calendars and the individual holidays, a glossary, and New Year's greetings in many languages. As you can see, it's both a Junior Library Guild selection and it has received three starred reviews. I especially like what Publishers Weekly said, that it's a lovely collection that looks back at tradition and forward to new beginnings. And with praise like that, any day is a good day to read every month is a new year. Next we have Galapagos Girl or Galapagena by Marilyn Diane, Ar Marsha Diane Arnold, published by, illustrated by Angela Dominguez, coming this September. And this charming bilingual picture book introduces the fascinating creatures of the Galapagos Islands to the life of one very lucky girl. Valentina was born on an island formed by fire, surrounded by blue-green sea. As a Galapagena, Valentina spends her days having fun and observing the wonders of the Galapagos Islands, like the penguins and petrels you see here but she also understands the fragility of this wondrous world. And as she grows up, she makes a solemn promise to protect the islands and her animal friends. The story of an adventurous Latina girl is perfect for reading aloud with English or Spanish speaking children, especially if they love animals, or you're teaching a lesson on endangered species or biodiversity. And here's illustrator Angela Dominguez to tell you more. Hi, I'm Angela Dominguez. I'm an author and illustrator quite a few books for children. Um, you might know me from my first middle grade novel that I've ever authored, Stella Diaz has something you can say, that came out this year. And then I've been fortunate to receive the Little Book of Grey illustration honor twice. Once for my book, Maria Had a Little Llama, or Maria Tenia Luna Yamita, and Mango Abuela and Me, written by the tremendous Meg Medina. But I'm here today to talk about my upcoming book, Lean Low, Galapagos Girl. Um, it's written by Marsha Diane Arnold. And when I received the manuscript, I just fell in love with the story. I just found it so poetic and dreamy in a 
conjured all these beautiful images of this place that I just find absolutely fascinating, and I think most people do too. And so I love that I had the perfect excuse to watch documentaries, to go to the library, and just do my research. So I have some of the original artwork here. Um, I did this book just a little bit differently than my normal books. Uh, so with this one, I did really tight pencil drawings. Um, and then I scan it in and put digital color on top. Usually I would do maybe a little bit more mixed media on the actual uh, traditional side. But with this book, I really wanted the colors to be really saturated and bright and tropical. And I just felt like I could achieve that better doing that on the computer. And so I have some of printed groups here. So you can see a little bit of the pencil poking through um, in there. And this illustration just always makes me happy because, you know, I had her doing cartwheels because I thought if I lived with the penguins, I'd probably be doing cartwheels too. And I really have to credit uh, Jessica, the editor on the project, and actually the art director for really pushing me with the color and the overall look of the book. It just looks so bright and happy. So pleased with it. And then I have two other samples here. This is another one of my favorite pages. Uh, this is where she's with the lava lizards, the blue foot of boobies, which if you have not watched a video on them, you have to like go do that right now because it's probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. And then sea lions. And I'm probably my absolute favorite one is actually the cover. It's just so dramatic and happy, it feels sunny, and there's a sense of adventure, and she looks so confident, which is so great, because I think little girls and all children need to see themselves in that way. And we also were thinking a little bit of the Little Mermaid, Ariel, being on the rocks, and so it just makes me chuckle when I see it. Um, so I hope you check it out. I know it was a real labor of love for all of us, and thank you. Bye. So, oh, we're proud to say Galapagos Girl, Galapagena is a JLG selection, and you can look for it this coming September. Next, we have Hammering for Freedom, the William Lewis story, by Rita Lorraine Hubbard and illustrated by John Holyfield, coming in September. Remember when I mentioned the New Voices Award at the beginning, which we at Lee and Lowe used to bring more people of color into the publishing industry? Hammering for Freedom is a winner of that award, as debut author Rita Lorraine Hubbard reveals the powerful, inspirational story of William Bill Lewis. Born into slavery in Tennessee, Bill learned the blacksmith trade as soon as he could grip a hammer. He earned so much money for his master as a blacksmith that he was allowed to keep a little of it for himself. And from this, he came up with a daring plan. He was determined to free his family. Bill paid his master $350 to rent his freedom each year. Then he opened a blacksmith shop in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And for 27 years, he worked day and night. He slowly bought the freedom of his wife, Jane, his son, Eldridge, and himself. That way he could keep all his earnings and he didn't have to keep renting himself, as crazy as that sounds. Then he bought the freedom of his elderly mother, aunt, two brothers, and a sister. In the 1850s, he paid $2,000 for a house large enough for his entire family. And you can see the real William with his wife and children here on their porch in 1889. He's the man with the beard in the middle. This incredibly moving book makes the heartbreak of slavery fresh and real, while also celebrating the creativity and entrepreneurship of William Lewis and the power of his determination and his love for his family. It too is a JLG selection, and here as with all our fall books, we look forward to more reviews and notices to come. Next is Malala Yousafzai, Warrior with Words, by Karen Lega Abariah, illustrated by Susan L. Roth, coming this November. This book is also available in Spanish. You may know Malala's inspiring and powerful story how she grew up in Pakistan, loving books and school. And then 
after the Taliban closed all schools for girls in 2009, 11-year-old Malala began to speak and blog about the right of all children to receive an education. In response to her activism, she was shot by a Taliban gunman in 2012, but this life-threatening injury only strengthened her resolve. Just nine months after being attacked, Malala addressed the United Nations about the right of every child to receive an education. In 2014, she became the youngest ever recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. This telling of her story by journalist Karen Leggett Abaraya, the most up-to-date biography on the market, places a special emphasis on the power of words, books, and education. The captivating collage illustrations by Susan L. Roth incorporate real notebook paper from Pakistan, as you can see here on the left. And the back matter offers additional information about Pakistan, Malala, and some of the ways people worldwide are working to ensure all children have the opportunity to go to school. The importance of education is a powerful theme in our books this year because we also have Midnight Teacher, Lillianne Granderson and Her Secret School by Janet Huffman, illustrated by London Ladd. In February, we published this thoughtful picture book biography about a courageous educator who risked her life to teach others to read and write. After Lillianne Granderson learned to read from her master's children, she read everything she could get her hands on. And she also started using her skills to teach other enslaved children what she knew. As a grown woman in Natchez, Mississippi, she established a school for anyone willing to learn. Her students slipped out late at night, risking their lives for the chance at literacy, and then the chance to pass that gift on to their own families. After the Civil War ended in 1865, Lillianne Granderson finally conducted her classes in delight, and she continued to teach until she passed away some 30 years later. Midnight Teacher is an inspiring testament to an amazing instructor and pioneer in education. It recently received a Parents' Choice Silver Award, and in the start review, Kirkus said it was an excellent homage to an African-American woman who taught ahead of her time. Now we have a party book, Our Celebration, by Susan Middleton Elia, illustrated by Anna Aranda, coming this October. Our Celebration is a delightful rhyming romp through a small town parade, written in English with Spanish words sprinkled throughout. Today's a happy celebration, a time for joy and jubilation. Get your family, one, two, three. Are you ready? Claro, si. Clap as the clarinetes and saxophones burst with song. Watch the dancers and enjoy hot dogs, hamburgueses, and juicy sandia. Wave to the corn princess on her glamorous float. And after a rain shower, you can name all the colors in the rainbow. Rojo, anaranjado, amarillo. See, today is a special day. Meet vecinos, laugh and play. For whatever good raison, we love our celebración. The story emphasizes a sense of community and shows people of many backgrounds enjoying an American ritual together. There are plenty of context clues in the illustrations to help English speakers with the meanings of Spanish words. And the glossary and pronunciation guide are also included on the last page of the book. Our celebración is the perfect way to enjoy a summer day and learn some Spanish too. And you can also look for it in the Junior Library Guild. Our last picture book today is a double debut for author Helena Ku Ri and illustrator Colleen Kong Savage. The Turtle Ship which just came out last week. And we actually have a wonderful video from Colleen here to introduce it. Uh, you may, this video can be a little bit quiet, so you may want to max out your volume as I play it. Let's see here. Hi, I'm Colleen Tom Savage, and I want to share my experience with illustrating my first book. The Turtle Ship by Helena Kuri is a historical fiction about a boy, Sun Shin, who lives in 16th century Korea he wishes to travel the world, but the only way he can do so is by winning the king's contest to design the best battleship. Luckily, he has a sidekick, a pet turtle named Gobuku, who sparks a brilliant idea. It's hard to remember there was a time when there were no pictures of the ship, just words. In order to create the right environment for Sunshin and Gobuku, I researched the Joseon dynasty. What did people wear? Where did they live? What was the land like? And of course, what about the turtle ship? I collected images from the internet, libraries, museums, even movies. 
and I used those images to help me imagine the world that this boy lived in. I experimented with the characters by drawing them in different positions with different expressions, and I tried various compositions. And sometimes I couldn't get a gesture right, so I'd end up posing in front of the mirror for reference. After finalizing the drawings, I started the collage process. I decided what papers to use in each composition, what colors worked well together. I made several copies of each drawing. I used them to cut out the exact shapes or glue the pieces in the right place. My studio is a paper blitz when I collage. I work with papers from around the world. In this turtle trip, I used paper from Thailand, Nepal, India, and the bottom is Egyptian papyrus. In these pine needles, I used Italian crepe. And of course, I had to use Korean kanji. I think it's poetic that Sun Shin, who is so eager to see the world, lives in this one book because so much of the world has to be So we're very excited for the turtle ship. And, and in a start review, School Library Journal called it a great mix of myth and history for most picture book collections. And we hope you'll add it to yours. That rounds out our 2018 picture book list and takes us into our early readers and chapter books. First up, we have a new initiative from our Bebop books line, Mas Pinata. Mas Pinata is a dual language level learned, leveled reading series with books for emerging and beginning readers at Fountains, Fountas and Pinnell levels A through I. It's created by longtime educators and it was the first early, authentic early literacy program for Spanish speaking students in the United States. We now have 92 titles available in both Spanish and English. All the books feature authentic stories featuring kids who look like your students, high frequency words, simple sentence patterns, familiar words and concepts, natural oral language sentence structures, large, well-spaced print, and we support the books with a comprehensive literacy program, including lesson plans and assessments. And this is just designed to give you a sort of sense of the range of books that we have in this line. And that's Mas Pinata. From there, we have another series for slightly older readers, The Confetti Kids. If you seek an early reading series that looks like your kid's real life classroom, look no farther. These delightful books focus on five friends who live in the same urban neighborhood, Henry, Lily, May, Pablo, and Padma, as they have everyday contemporary kid adventures. And all the books are written, illustrated, edited, and designed by a diverse creative team. The texts level out at Fountas and Pinnell I, and contain, um, which is more or less grades K to two. And they contain rich text features like a table of contents, chapter breaks, and an easy and fun activity that children can do with the adults in their lives. And all of them are available in both paper over board and paperback. We just published two new books in the series. First up, The Garden by Gwendolyn Hooks, illustrated by Shirley Ng Benitez. In the garden, Lily decides she wants to work in the community garden. A neighbor shows her and her friends how to pick out seeds and plant them. And as you can see here, the text places a special emphasis on helping, which is a lesson that is always useful to reinforce. As the kids learn what plants need in order to grow, they also learn that they have to wait and wait and wait sometimes for the plants to sprout. But when they see the fruits of their labor, they're so thrilled they can't wait to garden next year. So this book offers a lovely introduction to the plant cycle and to patience. Our second new book in the series is The Perfect Gift by Polly Yu, also illustrated by Shirley. May's little brother is turning 100 days old and there will be a big party to celebrate. Grandma teaches May how to dye lucky red eggs to give to the guests. But May worries about finding the perfect gift for her brother. Her friends try to help, but everything costs more than they expect. When the day of the party comes, May still doesn't have a gift, but Grandma tells her that a perfect gift comes from the heart. So May decides to create an album of her drawings, which her brother loves. This sweet book about tradition and family was especially dear to the illustrator, Shirley Ng Benitez, who also holds 100 day celebrations in her family. And it was selected by the JLG and received a star review from Kirkus, 
who said it was a perfect package of early reader accessibility, culturally conscious story, and inclusivity. Finally, we're excited to introduce you to our new line of nonfiction chapter books, the Story Of series. These are geared toward readers ages 8 to 12, and each title in the series presents readers with the biography of a multicultural historical figure. Our first three titles, as you can see here, are the story of tennis champion Arthur Ashe, the story of World War II hero Irena Sindler, and the story of car engineer Soichiro Honda. The series has a unique backstory. Lee and Lowe is well known for our acclaimed picture books biographies, and teachers have told us over and over again how much they like using these books in their classroom. But they've also said that older independent readers don't want to be seen reading picture books. So we took the text from our picture books and added features just for these independent readers, including nonfiction sidebars, bolded vocabulary words in a glossary, quote boxes, photographs, timelines, source lists, and recommended further reading. Um, and then you can see we, we incorporated the illustrations as well. This way, teachers can continue to use the picture books with younger students, while older independent readers can read and enjoy the books themselves. The sidebar topics were chosen to, understand, chosen to enhance understanding of the context, events, issues, and people mentioned in the narrative. For instance, in the Arthur Ashe book here, we spotlight Althea Gibson, Grand Slam Tennis, South African Apartheid, and HIV. And we created unique, attractive photos and diagrams that help students understand the inner workings of a topic, whether it's the roots of World War II in our Irena Sindler book, or how a piston functions in a car for Soichiro Honda, something I truly had no idea about. And we'll have three more great titles coming this fall about movie star Anna Mae Wong, civil rights hero John Lewis, and Olympic swimmer, swimmer and surfing champion Duke Kahanamoku. Thank you for keeping an eye out for these books and diversifying your chapter biography space. And that's the end of our Lee and Lowe books projects. If you'll give me a moment here, I'll pass the mic off to Stacy Whitman, who will talk about two books. Hello, everyone. I'm Stacy Whitman, the publisher and founder of Two Books. I founded Two Books as a small press in 2009 and as an independent small press. Oops. Uh, in 2009, as an independent small press and um, joined Lee and Lowe in 2010. We publish middle grade and young adult novels and graphic novels with the same emphasis on excellence and diverse books as the rest of the company. We're very proud of the books that we published and that will be coming out later this year. First up, All the Stars Denied by Guadalupe Garcia McCall. Coming this September, an American story of deportation and resistance. In a timely prescient novel for teens, Guadalupe Garcia McCall tackles the hidden history of the United States and its first mass deportation event that swept up hundreds of thousands of Mexican-American citizens during the Great Depression. More than a million people of Mexican descent were deported in the early 1930s, 600,000 of whom were American, American citizens. California apologized for this violation of civil and constitutional rights in 2005. In the heart of the Great Depression, when Estrella or organizes a protest against the treatment of Tejanos in their Texas town, her family becomes a target of repatriation efforts to send Mexicans, quote unquote, back to Mexico, whether they were ever Mexican citizens or not. Dumped across the border and separated from half her family, Australia must figure out a way to survive and care for her mother and baby brother. How can she reunite with her father and grandparents and return home? There are no easy answers in the first YA book to tackle this hidden history, another from Puerto del Prey award-winning author, Guadalupe Garcia McCall. Those who loved Ashley Hope Perez's Out of Darkness or Ibizobui's American Street will appreciate this pull no punches novel that tackles, tackles Amer Mexican American civil rights and surviving in a new country. Speaking of Guadalupe Gar Garcia McCall, next up, El Verano de las Mariposas by Guadalupe Garcia McCall and translated by David Bowles. We published this one in March and it's available now which is a, a beloved young adult classic published back in 2012 that is now in Spanish. It's a magical retelling of the Odyssey starring 15-year-old Odelia, the reluctant re leader of her four younger sisters as they set off on a fantastical road trip. 
After finding a drowned man floating in their secret swimming hole along the Rio Grande, the, the sisters trek across the Mexican border to bring his body to his family in Mexico. But returning to their ancestral home turns into an odyssey of their own. Outsmarting mythical creatures with the supernatural aid of La Llorona, Odilia and her little sisters travel a road of trials and make it to their long-lost grandmother's house. Can these fantastic trials prepare Odilia and her sisters for what happens next when they face their final test, returning home to the real world where goddesses and ghosts can no longer help them? Summer of the Mariposas is not just a magical, a magical Mexican-American retelling of the Odyssey. It is a celebration of sisterhood and maternal love. As you can see, the original Summer of the Mariposas in English requ received quite a bit of critical re recognition, and now it's available in both English and Spanish. In middle grade novels, we now have Ana Maria Reyes Does Not Live in a Castle coming this October. This is the first of two, uh, by Hilda Eunice Burgos. This is the first of two terrific middle grade debuts on this list by Latinx authors, and it's a corker. Think Little Women in Washington Heights. Her last, name, her last name may mean kings, but Anna Maria Reyes really does not live in a castle. Rather, she's stuck in a tiny apartment with two parents who are way too lovey-dovey, three sisters who are way too dramatic, everyone's friends way too often, and a piano, which she never gets to practice. Then she hears about the Eleanor School, New York City's most exclusive academy. If Anna Maria can win a scholarship, she can get the top-notch education she longs for. But to do that, she'll need to practice the piano, navigate family politics on a trip to the Dominican Republic, and figure out her place in her family and neighborhood at last. Anna Maria may not be royal, but she's certain to come out on top. This terrific debut realisti realistically reflects the hard choices that many families make regarding their children's education. But it's always fun, thanks to Anna Maria's prickly, funny, unreliable narration. And to the wonderful cast of characters who surround her, especially her three sisters and their neighborhood friends. If you love Millicent Min Girl Genius, The Penderwicks, or How Tia Lil Came to Stay, don't miss Anna Maria Reyes does not live in a castle. In graphic novels, we're proud to present Grand Theft Horse by Jean Neri, illustrated by Corbin Wilkin, coming this September. Jean Neri won a Coretta Scott King Award for honor for his graphic novel, Yummy, the Last Days of a Soft Side Shorty, among many other honors. You may also know him for his novel in verse, Chess Rumble, or his illustrated novel about a young man who bonds with horses in the stables of inner, inner city Philadelphia, Ghetto Cowboy. Now he's taking a look at the horse racing industry through the eyes of his cousin, Gail. Here's a peek at the final art with fully rendered tones. Gail Rufu was a rookie trainer known for her un unconventional methods and ability to handle dangerous horses. When she became part owner of an untamed thoroughbred named Urgent Envoy, everything changed. After Urgent Envoy showed real promise, her co-owners forced Gail to speed up training and race him too early, causing the horse to develop a hairline fracture. Refusing to drug the horse to keep it running, Gail lost Urgent Envoy to her partners who pushed the horse even harder. One more race would kill him. When nobody heeded her warnings, Gail had to act. So on Christmas Eve, she rescued her own horse. A modern day outlaw, Gail evaded private investigators and refused to give the horse up. Blacklisted by the racing world, she learned the law at night to take on a powerful LA attorney determined to crush her in court. As she stood up for the humane treatment of racehorses, she also faced down the system that could cause their demise. We also, in the course of the graphic novel, get some flashbacks into Gail's childhood, her inspiration, how she learned her training methods, and a glimpse, a glimpse into her family. In this gorgeous graphic biography, Jean Neri, author of the acclaimed Yummy and Ghetto Cowboy, retells the life of his cousin Gail, a pioneer who changed the horse racing world for the sake of one extraordinary horse. With illustrations by brilliant newcomer Corbin Wilkham, it is a must read for horse lovers everywhere. Next up, more middle grade. There's No Base Like Home by Jessica Mendoza and Alana, and Alana Mendoza de San, and illustrated by Ruth McNally Barshaw to be released next week. Jessica Mendoza is an ESPN analyst and two-time Olympic medalist, and she's teaming up with her sister, Alana Mendoza-Dusson. 
for their first highly illustrated novel for young readers, A Dork Diaries for Sporty Kids. In this video in interview of Jessica Mendoza with Allure Magazine, she talks about her Mexican heritage and passion, and her passion for sports, which are the same issues they tackle in There's No Base Like Home. Just be aware that it gets a little bit quiet in the middle, so you might want to turn up your speakers. Oops, what just happened? how I grew up has influenced my style. This big Mexican family and the fact that we always were so comfortable in our own skin. So society, the stuff that I think we see a lot now for young girls, didn't really reach me because I had this huge Mexican bubble around me saying, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're strong, and be you. Having a father as a football and a baseball coach, I grew up around college baseball players, college football players. Like, I just knew sports my whole life sidelines, I was in the dugout, I'm chewing tobacco, and I'm like, this, this is my world, I'm four years old, this is, you know, this is what I know, and it allowed me to kind of just be the girl who could then pull from all of a sudden playing pickleball with the boys in the street, and I'm like, this girl, she can't play, and I'm like, let's go, like, come on, bring it on. The line, how I grew up. Sorry about that. Um. This will be 12-year-old Maria, Sofia Maria Garcia's best year ever. She's trying out for the same championship softball team on which her sister played at her age, and she's starting middle school. But all does not go according to plan. Sofia does not make the Wave softball team, and her best friend is suddenly more interested in boys than Sofia. As the middle school blues set in and her family is pulled in different directions, Sofia is invited to join a new team being formed where she makes new friends and learns new skills and figures out how to stay connected to her family and best friend outside softball. Combining the popular appear, appeal of the Dork Diaries and the sports appeal of books by Matt Christopher and Derek Jeter, this highly illustrated novel packs a sporty middle school punch with a strong emphasis on, pow on girl power in sports. Speaking of girl power in sports, we're very happy to share this praise for the book from the top women in sports, Billie Jean King, Lisa Fernandez, and Carrie Walsh Jennings. And finally, another New Visions Award winning title in middle grade, The Wind Called My Name by Mary Louise Sanchez, coming this September. This is the second of our two terrific Latinx middle grade debuts on this list. And like All the Stars Denied, it's one of the rare historical fiction novels focused on people of color and indigenous people, something we'd like to publish more of. Some, some days, 10-year-old Margarita Sandoval feels as if the wind might blow her away. The country has been gripped by the Great Depression, so times are hard everywhere, and she just had to leave her familia in New Mexico to move to Fort Steele, Wyoming, where her father has a job with a railroad. It turns out the Sandovals are the only Hispanic family in town. That must means they must remember, that means they must remember to speak English and try to connect with the Anglo, Anglo people around them, even as they also save money to preserve their family's land in New Mexico. Can Margarita make friends, help her family, and find a place in Fort Steele for good? While this may be a historical novel, it explores some tremendously timely topics, like the idea of friendship across cultural lines and the richness a, communi a community can gain thanks to diversity. It also wonderfully celebrates the warmth and spirit of families of Hispanic descent, like Mary Louise Sanchez's, as the book is based closely upon her parents' experience growing up in Fort Steele. You can see a picture of her mother and uncle here. If you love Out of the Dust or Hattie Big Sky, and you want to diversify the historical fiction you recommend about the Depression or the American West, or if you love Esperanza Rising, and you're looking for another Latinx middle grade for all readers, don't miss the wind call my name. That brings us to the end of our presentation here today. We so appreciate your time and attention, your interest in diverse books, and your work sharing more of these books with the world. You can connect with us online at our website, leeandlow.com, and through social media at at leeandlow and at two books, where we are on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram. If you're going to be at ALA next week, stop by our booth, 3452, where we'll have a wide range of appearances and giveaways. For those of you joining us live, if you happen to live in the Denver area, come see our booth this weekend at Denver Comic Con. And again, educators, please reach out to Abe and our educational team at the information you see here. Please look for a link to a recording of this presentation in a few days. Thank you for your interest in 
Leanne Low Books.